like you see here with the British pounds. Now, it just so happened that uh, in a few years, uh, let me go ahead and move this down a little bit. Uh, in a few years, meaning specifically uh, coming into uh, 1990, uh, I'm sorry, 1981-82, uh, you know, you saw some changes in U.S. fiscal policy and, of course, interest rates, so uh, the Great British Pound starts to go down. And this actually is a very big decline. Uh, if, if you think about it, the, the British Pound went from a high, uh, let's just say, of uh, 2,400 down to a low, uh, we'll say here, of one, um, pardon me, of 1,800. So you have, uh, in essence, a 6,000 point decline from 1980 to 1981, a, an absolutely huge and fast decline. Uh, in fact, on this one week alone, you can see uh, that there was just a massive move down for the British pound. So, you know, there was, there was a, a lot of volatility at this time. A lot of things were going on. Uh, you can see that the de decline continued for some time here into 1983. Uh, this, is, this is when the, the U.S. was really experiencing ultra-high interest rates. Again, when interest rates start to go up, uh, currencies will, f will move to that country simply because banks are paying more interest. You can see here lots of pressure on the British pound. So from 80 to 84, or think about this, from 80 to 84, the British pound went from 2.4000 down here to... 1.0, we'll just say, uh, whoops, 1 point, yeah, 0, 0.400. 0, 0. Hey, do you understand this is on the order of 10,000 points or 10,000 pips to the downside? Just an absolutely huge move to the downside in four years. Okay, so there's a big, big decline in the British pound. And anytime you see a, a big decline like that, it is simply because there are more sellers than buyers. Okay, so some, for some reason in 1985, uh, the British pound starts to pick back up. Okay, and we can just sort of fast forward here, coming into 88, 89, just a lot of volatility. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, really, go ahead and zoom out some here. Um, here we go. From here was 85. Look at this, all the way into 90. Uh, you saw very little upside movement. In fact, the uptrend really ended right here. After this point, uh, you saw the long-term trend go to sideways simply because you started getting these, this mixed bag of higher highs, lower lows, higher lows, lower highs. Uh, so that really from 84 to 87, the market moved up. And then from 88 on, you saw the sideways movement. And then you saw the rally capped by this level here, this 2000 or 2.0033. So, again, looking back here, we can see how the British pound played, or how the British pound traded, to start to get an idea to see if history will repeat itself. This, that's going to be the key moving forward. Is history going to repeat itself? Is the market going to resist here at 2.033? From the looks of things, uh, you know, it just might. Let's take a look at, at the weekly here. Let's go ahead and zoom way in. And you can see that Last week closed down off of the high. This week actually closed down, although uh, it was quite a bit lower. You can see here that it pushed up uh, mostly today. Uh, but you can see that the, that the pound for this week was much, much lower. Uh, remember from last week, uh, this area was going to be a critical support zone, which, again, it was. That area in, included um, the closing high from over here. There we go. And this high here, the spike high, all of these were combining to give us an area where we were looking for support. Okay, so how do we, how do we turn all of this into money? Okay, it, it's great to have theories, uh, but you know, every garden variety economist has their theories. How do we turn it into money? Well, let's go back over here to these prior highs. Now, one thing uh, that we've got to notice is that the market did not spend very much time up here.